Hi, I'm Nancy Nangeroni. I'm Gordine McKenzie. And this is Gender Vision. <laughs> Lots of people making big, big bucks. You and me, babe, I see what I love. Well, I heard a voice from a high bar. It don't cost a thing just to be in love. We don't have any. Folks, welcome back to another Gender Vision. We have a very exciting program for you tonight. We're going to be talking about gender and politics and the 2008 presidential election. Uh, we have a great guest, so it's going to be a terrific show. Um, I think, though, we're going to not have one of our guests, right? We're not, we're not going to have... Raving Raven. Yeah. Raving Raven has flown south so, <laughs> and so is we'll... still in the southwest and couldn't be with us this week, but uh, promises to be back next time. All right, so we'll look forward to that. Gordine and I just spent a week in the, a couple of weeks in the Southwest, so uh, yeah, apparently Raven couldn't keep up with us. But we do have a terrific guest. Who's our guest tonight, Gordine? I'm really happy to introduce Jane Caputi, who is an author, writer, and co-producer of a documentary film, The Pornography of Everyday Life. Uh, Jane is also a women's studies professor at Florida Atlantic University, uh, where she teaches wonderful courses about the media, gender, race, and all kinds of things, and a longtime friend. Right. Welcome to Gender Thank Vision, you. Jane. Thank you. Happy to be here. It's yeah. great to have you here. Thank you. And Jane, you have recently done an art exhibit. You curated it. You wrote it. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I was the guest curator for an art exhibit called Political Three Ring Circus. And the first ring of the circus, which I'm responsible for, focuses on all the commercial campaign paraphernalia that you can purchase on the internet and some other venues. So the t-shirts, the bumper stickers, the buttons, etc. And I don't collect them all. I just select the ones that use prejudicial caricatures of the candidates. This is a historic election. Thus far, as we all know, every candidate has been a white man. This year, we have, obviously, a great variety in the can well, pretty good variety in the yeah. candidates. It's been fantastic. Huh? And uh, so I thought that this would be something interesting to document, this, the kinds of prejudicial attitudes that are still, um, actually have always been around, but are being resurrected and reinvented yeah. around this. And mostly I, I operated out of a sense of outrage, because you won't believe some of the stuff that I've found. So that was your inspiration? Were there other inspirations for the project? Well, the inspiration, I was at a conference. I was touring with my um, idea of the pornography of everyday life, and I heard Bell Hooks, the African-American theorist, um, say that she had seen on the streets of New York a t-shirt, I wish Hillary had married OJ. Yeah, which we could spend the next half yeah, hour discussing is, all the implications is, of... Yeah, the implication, of course, that I wish Hillary had been murdered and yeah, was not out. available to run. Right, and also, of course, evoking a racist stereotype, again, the, of the black brute, the man who's more likely to injure women, which is, of course, untrue. It's a historical stereotype that has been post-slavery. And not to say anything about O.J. the man, but just using O.J. as sort of this, um, almost an archetype, a contemporary archetype of that kind of threat mm, sure. and putting him in there. So it's, it's doing a whole lot of things on both a racist and a sexist level with that kind of T-shirt. Wow. So I thought, I've got to start looking at this. So I went on the Internet, I talked to people, and I started collecting things. Yeah. That's what... Where, where do you collect all of these items from? There, there were like five or six different sites just devoted to hating Hillary and generating oh. anti-Hillary stuff. There's a few other, not so much, then there's this one place called Cafe Press, which says it has its, its um, finger on the pulse of popular culture mm -hmm. America. And basically anybody, you or I or anybody, can design things, and then there's small groups that design things too and send them in to be purchased. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a wide variety of pro, anti, etc. I just, as I said, look for all the prejudicial stuff. But it's individuals out there who are putting their designs in. So it's real vernacular art, real popular culture. Yeah, kind of a pulse on the cultural attitudes mm -hmm. around, around gender, around race, and around, mm -hmm. the, around right. the campaign. And some of them, of course, are progressive. Others are extremely regressive, yeah. white supremacist, deeply sexist, very homophobic, 
classes. We're going to see a lot of class prejudice against Sarah Palin, others expressing race privilege, et cetera. Interesting. Fascinating. So we have we have a bunch some to of look at slides, yeah. and we have a little bit of video too. So let's see what we got. Hopefully, this will all work absolutely flawlessly. Good. We're on, we're on track. Without a doubt. Look at this. So here's our, our first slide here. Yeah, that's the one. Um, oh. I actually bought it as a bumper sticker. You can get these things in a variety of forms, but there's I wish Hillary had married OJ. And then the next one I thought said a great deal. This is a t-shirt, Welcome to the Freak Show. Wow. And you know, basically the way all this works is that there is a stereotype, a positive one of the norm. And it's interesting, I could find no caricatures of Joe Biden. And again, this has nothing to say really about Joe Biden, whether we like him or don't like him. Yeah. But because he's white, he's straight, he's successful, he's Christian, he basically is supposed to be the norm. And then as this t-shirt indicates that against the idea of the norm, we have the construction of the other or the freak. And then you can also see the way Hillary is being caricatured as sort of cackling and a little hysterical these sort of sexist stereotypes of women, where Obama is shown as dark, lined, some, somewhat threatening. Brooding, Again, very, brooding, very brooding, bringing up this idea of the dangerous of um, black man. Yeah. So just the notion of having a black man running for president and having a woman running for president is freakish. Yeah, it's freakish in and of, yeah, that's what this in is and saying. Mm-hmm. And that's scary to me. Oh, yeah. Me, that's, freak, <laughs> that's what's freakish, yeah. 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 is yeah. that somebody would you know, mm -hmm. seriously think mm -hmm. that. And presidential campaigns have always had smears, always. Um, one of the, when Thomas Jefferson was running against John Adams, one of his political hacks called John Adams a hermaphroditical, um, yes, who had neither the full strength of a man nor the grace of a woman. I mean, so there have always been smears, and smears mostly rooted in gender and religion. But now that we have, um, again, a, a much wider field of candidates, yeah. Um, you're also going to get seriously racist and deeply misogynist stereotypes going on as well. You know, yep. that was true in the Iraqi war, too, when they wanted to really uh, defame Saddam Hussein. One of the things that they did was they uh, put up a big billboard and they put hair and lipstick on mm. a picture of uh, Hussein and then they used it for target mm -hmm. practice. But they, first they had to feminize him, so there's that whole thing of feminizing the, the enemy, and the, which carries a lot of misogynist connotations in terms right. of what's, you know, women are bad, so we're going to denigrate men by making them more like women. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the reason we talk about this on gender vision is because, um, in fact, this is a good measure of the degree of um, uh, discomfort in our culture around issues of gender and race. The fact that it comes out in this way is sort of a litmus or a it's an indicator, it's a real thermometer on the temperature of the country around gender and race. And those are two areas where a lot of people are very uncomfortable. Well, yeah. depending on how you're being caricatured or not in these images, yes. right? Yes. Shall, yeah, so shall we, move yeah, on? we can move on. What we got next? This is okay. actually from the 2004 presidential election, which I brought in to just give a little yeah. background how don't be a girly man, vote Republican. Mm -hmm. So the threat that any you know, normal so-called man is going to lose his manhood if he votes for a candidate of a party other than the Republicans. Yeah, amazingly, they managed to portray Kerry Mm. as somehow less masculine than George Bush. Right. The, uh, yeah, which is, again, an exercise in doublethink, the man who had actually the been who, to war, which is seen as the, the man classic. The who served versus the right. one who, who ducked right. out. Right, right. Yeah. So it's a way of denigrating Democrats, mm -hmm. too, and saying that they're, they're too feminine, they're too soft, mm -hmm. that we really need a, a mm -hmm. man. And isn't that Arnold Schwarzen? Yeah, he said really, something about yeah. being economic girly men girly or something men. like yes. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the, you know, we can see the con contrast with um, McCain is generally figured as a tough bastard, right? The toughness <laughs> there. Tough bastard. Once again, sort of normal, acceptable. Manly, manly man. The manly man, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. But then you'll get Barack Obama um, caricatured in this way oh, as a right. home girl, right? And, um, my home girl. Barack Obama is my home girl. Yeah, and again, in the exhibit, I have over 200 items. And when you see them all together, it really is quite stunning. We don't have time for that here. But and someday you're going to put this into a, a film. We would hope so. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, I hope um, so. this is astounding to see this because if you don't see it, if you're not aware this is going on, it's like how many people are seeing these images and going, yeah. Well, there are, and the other thing too is another thing we could document, and it, I do in the exhibit, not to keep referring back to it, is that all these kinds of things were also 
put into the mainstream media. I could just give you some quotes. Um, you know, Joe Scarborough on Morning MSNBC. The thing is, Americans want their president, if it's a man, to be a real man. Yeah. Here's Don Imus on Imus in the Morning. They're both, meaning Clinton and Obama, sissy boys or sissy girls or whatever, and he's Barack Obama, almost a bigger pussy than Hillary is. Ooh. Yeah, Don Imus in the morning. So you don't have to just see this stuff on the internet. And most of my students say they've seen this stuff even if they haven't purchased it because, of course, it's viral. It can be sent around. Yeah. It's very visible. The internet now. And the other thing about stereotypes is even if you don't believe you consciously hold these notions, what they're meant to do is just go into your subconscious and continually exert an influence, portraying a sort of negative affect or a negative influence that will subtly change the way you look at that candidate. You'll have that little idea in your head that there's something right. off about it's them. It's hard to get them out of your head. It is. And then, of course, it's not just about the individual. It's about the entire group they're said to represent. That's right. Yeah. All stereotypes. Um, again, this is a mainstream cover, very familiar. This is the cover of Vanity Fair with Tom Ford and the two naked actresses. And that caught a lot of attention. Caught a lot of attention. Yeah. Photographed by Annie Leibovitz. But look how Radar spoofs it. So Giuliani is in the picture of like the so-called normal man. Um, Hillary and then Obama, of course, spread out on the floor in the position of Scarlett Johansson. Making, making mm -hmm. um, Obama uh, Giuliani's bitch or whatever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And putting him in the subordinate position again. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. in the most because, subordinate yeah. position the most, here. Right. Yeah. Subordinate even to Hillary. And he's, he's lying down too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, this isn't just the internet stuff. This stuff makes it into mainstream, and the next one, we'll yeah. see that as well. Again, we think of this stuff as maybe coming more from the right wing, but it can come equally from the left wing. This is the cover of Mother Jones. And which is a left wing magazine. Which is a left wing yeah. magazine, and it's George Bush as the Wicked Witch. Oh, mm. Witches would be <laughs> completely outraged. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't want him for their own. <laughs> they wouldn't want him. But if you look down there, there's McCain as the Cowardly Lion and Obama as Dorothy. Really? Uh, yeah, we can see oh, the next okay. one too. Yeah. We'll get a close we'll up. Yeah, let's that. look yeah. at that. Oh, there we are. Uh, mm -hmm. What a trip. So yeah. they've got Obama in drag then. Once yeah. again. So yeah. yeah, this is a prevailing theme, again, in mainstream media as well as these kind of internet items. Yeah. Okay. And of course, it applies also to pretty much any candidate that somebody wants to be smirched, just call a man a woman. And this would really made people uncomfortable. The, the, the sign says, Bill for First Lady 2008. This really made people uncomfortable. The idea, I mean, I think people had trouble wrapping their heads around the idea of the man being in the role of the First Lady. That I think that made people as uncomfortable mm -hmm. as the idea of having Hillary as president. Because mm -hmm. Hillary as president, okay, we can see somebody, but what are they gonna do with Bill? It's sort of like yeah. the same problem that male to female cross dressers and transgender people um, run into because they're, you know, they're moving into a role of lesser status, and that really makes people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the same thing with with Bill Clinton. The the one of the big concerns that really hurt Hillary was, you know, is Bill going to be out of control? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's just another way to regulate gender behavior. It's to say there's something a little wrong here and then you see it in its far extreme here when they're they're using it in such a prejudicial way but you know it's bothering us therefore you know we can't have it. Who's mm -hmm. supposed to really be in power and, mm -hmm. and who isn't supposed to be in power. And we don't have any good societal mechanisms for dealing with that yeah. discomfort. Mm -hmm. we, there is no outlet for it. There's no legitimate way for people to say I'm really uncomfortable with this there's, there's never any rational discussion of that discomfort in the media. Mm -hmm. Rather, we get things like this instead, and we get people, Don Imus and you know, right. all their slander, but we never get anybody. We never see. There, there, I don't remember a single special documentary on the gender discomfort of having a woman running for president or having a man in the position that was normally occupied by the first lady. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, just oh another my, one. Just another one. Another one, yeah. yeah. You really want Bill as your first lady. <laughs> and then, of course, if, if Bill becomes a woman or a lady, one of the things, now, because Hillary stepped out of her assigned gender role and took on power and, and sought a public, role, right. a public role with power, right, then she yes. gets said as to be not really a woman. That's right. So this is Hillary at a urinal, mm -hmm. that she's really a man. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, they'd focus on, and this kind of demonization, all the candidates were portrayed as the devil. 
Um, but here, particularly because well, she wears all, pants suits. Right? <laughs> <laughs> kind of no, well, I don't know. Red glowing Just, eyes, yeah, like the pretty. Exorcist or something, the right. devil in pants. Wears pants suits, wears yeah. Pants and this is, again, yeah. standard demonization. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. um, the other thing, of course, said about Hillary is that she is a lesbian. And this is because lesbians signify a certain kind of autonomy. They're not in a hierarchical gendered relationship with a man, as in traditional male-female marriage, yep. right. as ordained by church and state. So when any woman, again, steps out the side of the submissive, accommodating feminine role, she's branded as either a man um, or, a lesbian, or a lesbian, as a way to put her down and make her into a freak. That's right, and the two sometimes become synonymous. Mm -hmm. There's that, that assumption, and erroneous assumption. And interesting, they chose a photo of her from her earlier days at Wellesley yeah. when she was less polished in her mm -hmm. portrayal yeah. of, of an, abs <clears throat> excuse me, an absolute femininity. Yeah. Well, one of her biographers says everything we need to know about Hillary is when she was formed at Les um, Wellesley. I almost said Lelsley. <laughs> <laughs> at Wellesley, where she was a Look how the aligned unconscious with radical lesbianism works. and stuff. Stuff. So, yeah. so they put that oh. rumor out for a long time. Such, such a terrible yeah. moment. Mm -hmm. oh, and then, this of course, one kills yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, if she's she's also a castrator. And this is a kind of binary thinking, is which Hillary says, "Is ready for this nutcracker, or is America is ready America for ready?" Nutcracker. Nutcracker. She's right. the nutcracker. <clears throat> you know, and this is the kind of binary thinking that men and women are opposites. So, and men are more powerful, and women are less powerful. And if a woman becomes powerful, then the man necessarily becomes castrated or less powerful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you see this also in racism, that whites and blacks, that whites are superior, blacks are inferior, and if blacks come into public consciousness, public roles, public power, that must mean whites are going to be oppressed. And again, this is a binary thinking that is erroneous, yeah. but it's an essential part of um, power relations and yeah. of keeping certain groups oppressed. You can't state that point powerfully enough either. Yeah. You know, the fact that someone gains power does not mean that someone right. else loses power. No. Power isn't just about power over other people. Right. You can have personal power that has nothing to do with being being able to subordinate other people. Right. That's just one kind of power. There's more mm -hmm. than one kind of power. But that's that's an argument that uh, uh, a lot of people from the right will oftentimes use. Right. That if someone gains power, like women, or if we have a, a black man for president, then someone else is going to mm -hmm. significantly suffer. And we need a lot. I mean, remember Geraldine Ferraro said. Um, you know, that Obama needs to speak to working class whites because when he says our time has come, and he means our, he means progressive peoples, whoever yeah. his constituents are, she said white people hear it as, well, then their time is over. So that's, yeah. again, that kind of binary thinking that we really need to understand yeah. is an erroneous way of thinking. Well, now we have two women in the, the campaign this time. Do you see a difference in terms of the way that Hillary and Sarah mm -hmm. Palin are... Yeah. yeah. I haven't found any of Sarah as a lesbian. <laughs> She's sometimes made to be a dominatrix. I don't see her oh. as a castrator. She can be a dominatrix. Okay. Interesting. And, but usually just as a glorified sex, sexual object, a sort mm. of pornographic fantasy. Well, that makes sense because the way she presents herself with all the little winks and smiles and nods, it's like she's flirting with the audience all the time, which One is, of course, that way. the mm -hmm. acceptable role for femininity in the culture, right? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's a subordinate role. It's saying, you know, I'm here, take me, Yeah, in a way. rather than saying, mm -hmm. you know, I'm here to get mine. Yeah, so. she might have um, a different interpretation of that. Um, she also is associated with working class culture, and mm -hmm. you'll see her pejority labeled a redneck. Um, but also you'll find some people saying, I'm a redneck and I'm proud for her. And there may yeah. be different cultural codes of presentation. You know, her old, I'm not like a polished politician up there, I'm just folks kind of right. thing. Right, and her on. language certainly can be. And, mm -hmm. and that's really important, I think, to think about when we think about popular culture and representation in popular culture is that we're all going to read it differently depending on the position that yeah. we're in. Right. So while we it's may true. be reading it one way coming from, from where we are, other people are going to read see it, it as a very different grain. Right. See it, yeah. And we'd actually, we'd love to hear from our viewers. Um, if you have a different interpretation yeah. on this, please share it with us. You know, on our website, there's a there's a place for comments. Um, please do share your interpretation yeah. of the difference. Mm -hmm. Um, you also get, you oh know, John much, McCain Bush's butt monkey. Right, much more rarely, but you'll find the same kind of homophobic and gender prejudicial stereotypes even aimed at McCain. And again, so the left that is, comes in, out of the is left, involving yeah. in similar. Do you see a lot more coming from the right than the left, or is it just kind of both ways? 
Uh, on ter in what terms of um, like putting putting a man down by saying you're more like a woman, or I see a, it's almost equal. Yeah. 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 Well, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. We would like to say, oh, people on the left are virtuous and no, we don't do but that I, stuff. I see but quite a bit of that. Or that maybe yeah, they have more savviness around the yeah. whole gender ideology and a critique of gender in our culture, but it's not necessarily, necessarily true. So, I yeah. know. <laughs> and that's a trap that we lefties fall into is we, we, we want to uh, demonize and denigrate folks on the right when, in fact, they're good folks just like we are trying to do the best they can and they have their bad behaviors just like we do. Hmm. <laughs> Jane may Thank have a you. different interpretation. About that. No, no, I'm <laughs> no. not like I'm saying yeah. not. It's I, didn't, I didn't say I'm there just were just scoundrels who were <laughs> into the ground. Uh, I didn't. No, but no, we do need dialogue. Yeah. We absolutely need dialogue yeah. and coalitions. I agree. I agree. And to hear each other out. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, Hillary Clinton can suck my conservative you-know-what. Yeah, and I hear I'm just talking, I mean, we mm. saw that in the Hillary and O.J. thing, just real vicious sort of misogynist threats of rape or of murder yeah. directed at a female candidate. Yeah, this one's really angry, isn't it? Very this angry. Very angry. They're angry. They're real angry at Hillary. There was a yeah. website, um, someone had put up some things on Facebook, and it was Hillary shut up and make me a sandwich. Yeah. And there were hundreds of thousands of people that had gone to that site. And really? yeah, when she was she was running against Obama, they wanted her to just shut up and make him just a sandwich. And that that really speaks mm -hmm. to, you know, another way of gatekeeping and saying, We don't want you here. We we have an expectation of who should be president. Get back and you in don't the kitchen. Fit it. Yeah, get back in there's the another, kitchen. There's a T shirt like yeah. that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And shut up, be silent. And shut up, be silent, absolutely. Okay, I don't know how we're doing on time here. Uh, if we could get the, from the control and let us know how we're doing on time, but we'll keep moving forward. Uh, uh, this one really gets Hillary's me. meal deal. Yeah. Oh my God, two fat thighs, fat thighs, two small breasts, and a bunch of left wings. Yeah. Ah. So really, just you know, and here, of course, if you're looking at this from a green perspective, the abuse of the abuse of animals in factory farms. And you know, making sort of an ecological feminist point that the way animals are treated is the way that women and other oppressed groups are New treated too. New crispy commie recipe. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's. <laughs> oh, this this rightwingstuff.com. Um, this this just seems like, I don't know. Totally it, objectification. Yeah. First of all, you know, you never see male candidates' bodies criticized. Yes, you do. You see Obama's bodies criticized. Obama's. Obama's yeah. body. Certainly really? his his skin color. His hair, yep. absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I have to say, yeah. The, part of the exhibit is called body stigma, and like basically, when you pick on somebody, some aspect of their body, okay, um, you are. That is one of the most effective ways so that's to not denigrate and pick on the whole group. Is not necessarily just a gender thing. Because I was thinking, you mm. know, God, if it was a guy, they'd never talk about his thighs, you no. know, or his belly. No. You know, because they never do. I've never heard that in a in any kind of presidential or no. any kind of electoral no. campaign. No, but in in in, in racist kind of iconography, they'll talk about eye shape or hair color, hair yeah. hair texture. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So so that's not necessarily just gender lines. Mm -mm. Although maybe a lot, maybe women and people of color get it, whereas white men don't. Yeah, well again, they, because have they you, occupy the norm because their body. Yeah. And have you seen a white man? Criticized for his body. Only uh, if, go ahead, Gordon. John Edwards. There is John Edwards his for his haircut, and uh, YouTube had a lot of videos. That's not manly. And I remember, so I remember on one hair. one video in particular where they had John Edwards getting groomed, and to the sound of "I feel pretty." Right, right. So, so they make fun of him that yeah. way. So that's gender. It gender yeah. nice. It's gender. Yep. McCain will be picked on due to his age. Yeah. yeah, because he would if he were elected. But we'll talk about that in a minute. But yep. I, I just brought in some to and we're show down, you. We did, we, we've got about four minutes. Okay, left. just yeah. a sample of the kind of racism that is directed. And this was sold at the Republican State Convention oh, in was. Texas. At the state convention, yeah. if Obama's president oh. again, not we'll call it the White House. Yeah, this was the vendors there. It wasn't officially sanctioned, but sure. it was yeah. sold there. Yeah. That's so you'd think that there'd be some policing of vendors, you know, because this is so. That's real. That's really overt racism there. Oh, and yeah. believe me, we're just this scratching the surface when, of what's, yeah. a, when what's we out there. When we were in Washington, D.C., and we saw all the people of color who were homeless around yeah. the White House and all the other white all buildings. All the big mm. monuments and everything. And, you know, it just made it, to me, it's like, oh, I see why it's called the White House, because that's the only people who can ever occupy mm. the seat of power. 
There's, a, there's a poem by Alice Walker where she has the line, we know why the White House is white. Yeah. That's true. Well, maybe That's that'll true. change. I, yeah. hope, you know, well, I hope we can't call it the White House anymore. Maybe we can call it the yeah. House of Color. Mm. <laughs> and again, this is just to show you some of the racist stereotypes that have made it into mainstream media, where um, Fox News and this, they think they call it a cryon at the bottom of the screen, said, stop picking on Obama's baby mama. And yeah. baby mama is slang for an unwed mother and is often associated with the stereotype of you know, black people not being properly respectable in terms of family values, et cetera. So to call Michelle Obama married mm. yep. um, you know, with her two daughters a baby mama is unfortunately putting, and there's just as much putting yeah. down Michelle Obama as, as Hillary and Absolutely. Barack Obama as well. Oh, absolutely. That's it for now. That's it. We're okay. out of time. We're gonna We haven't even gotten to Sarah Palin. Well we're going to. <laughs> We'll we're do gonna, that we're in do our much more. special segment. Um, but that'll be on the, on our, on the DVD. Okay. For those of you watching now, yeah. um, please um, buy the DVD because that helps support the show, helps support the work we're doing. We're going to talk much more with Jane. But meanwhile, for those who are watching online um, or on cable, um, where can they learn more about the work you're doing? Is there? Um, yeah, they could always email me at jcaputi, C A P U T I, at fau.edu. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Jane, thank you so much for doing this work. It's so important. It's absolutely fascinating. Yeah. I love it. Can't wait to talk about more of it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. It, it's certainly helping us all stretch our gender vision and expand our idea of gender, <laughs> <Yay>. which <laughs> we really need to do. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you.